Hi everyone, welcome back. Uh, reached a major milestone in the builds yesterday evening where I've managed to finally complete the attachment of the motor servo cables and power distribution to the motion for sim rig. So this felt like a good opportunity to uh, to talk through how the power distribution and how some of the, the cabling works. It looks complicated, but actually when you understand it, it's not particularly, uh, it's not particularly bad. It just takes a long time to do that. And I'd rather share that sort of information with you rather than the actual build process, because that's handled by videos from uh, the owner of Motion for Sim uh, when you buy, buy his particular products. Right. So how does power to the servo motors and the motion rig work? So let's start off with the plug socket here, which will attach to the, uh, the UK outlet three pin adapter that we have in the UK, which is uh, 240 uh, volts AC mains. We can draw up to uh, 16 amps of current for approximately three kilowatts of power. That's the limitation of our uh, electrical system in the in the UK and, and also uh, I think most uh, European countries as well. So the power cable, three pin power cable, goes into the back of the uninterruptible power supply system, uh, which powers the, the, the batteries and the device here. The output from the UPS system at the moment is this, uh, this spreader, four uh, plug spreader. And then you've got the plug here, which connects to the motion for sim rig. So the cable here is just passing underneath the, uh, the rig and it's coming up uh, to, the, uh, to the main switch there. So let me get you a, a closer view so you can, you can see that. Right, so the main switch with the power coming in from the, from the UPS system. If we look at the back here, nothing particularly complicated going on. Um, the I've, I've changed from the uh, the original uh, instructions uh, how I've connected some of the earth leads. I don't know if you can see that properly down there, but I'm using these um, uh, these M8 sort of spade adapters. I don't know the proper word for for that, but the 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 earth lead coming in attaches to this. It's then screwed to the rig and another one of these uh, spade uh, crimp type adapters uh, is supplying the uh, the earth to the other electrical components. So the power switch, uh, once it's switched on, you've got power that comes out of the out of the switch and into the uh, what I believe is termed the power distribution unit or, or PDU. So I just take the cover. Uh, off of this. You can see lots of cables uh, inside of there. Now, really, the reason why there's a lot of these wires is simply because we are powering uh, six motors. So you've got a, an earth lead, which is the, the yellow and green cable, uh, and then connected on this, uh, this green rail uh, here, sharing the, the earth coming into the uh, into the platform via the via the plug, um, and you've got the uh, the grey rail here, which is supplying uh, live mains power. Obviously, when it's switched on, and blue for the uh, for the neutral uh, uh, AC power. So of course you've got at least uh, three times six servo motor cables, which is you know eighteen. Just to just to start with, before you you get into any of the other wiring um, uh, complexities uh, that we're dealing with here. So, the, in essence, the power is coming in here, and it's sharing it out to all all six motors when it's switched on. So, this white device here is a timing relay, uh, and what it's doing is it's helping to prevent a surge of current and tripping. For example, your uh, your residual current detectors and circuit breakers in your you know your home power supply when you switch on the device for the first time. Oops, you dropped my uh, iPad there. Um, right, so 
The reason why that's a particular issue is these these servo drivers here inside of these boxes, uh, they will have banks of electronics and capacitors and things like that to be able to supply the right amount of voltage and current to the servo motors based on the instructions that they get. So when you power on the device for the first time, of course, what it's going to try and do is charge up all of those capacitors so that you can, uh, that the servo drivers are in a position to function and drive the, the motors. And the issue is, is if you try and do all six at once, that creates a basically a spike in, in current, uh, which potentially is going to trip the uh, your mains uh, circuit breakers uh, and things like that. So so what this white uh, timing relay is, is doing and what it's uh, set to, I'll show you the settings down there. Um, what it's doing is waiting one second before flipping its relay to, uh, to an on position once it starts receiving power. So the way in which this power distribution unit is set up is three of the servo motors, and in my case it does, it's these three on the, the left hand side here, it doesn't really matter which three. As soon as you flip the power switch on, these guys will start uh, receiving power and charging up automatically, and then the relay switch waits one second, and then it supplies the power to the other three motors. So you go power on, three, they power up, wait one second, one ton a second, and then these three motors will power up. I, I'll show you that a bit uh, uh, a bit later. But that's the purpose of, of this power distribution unit, to share the power out to all six motors, but also to add a, a one second delay to you know, better facilitate the, you know, the powering on and prevent, uh, you know, current and surge uh, issues and things like that. So next up, um, out of the box, if I pick uh, uh, this particular cable here, uh, just as an example, this cable will come out, it's delivering just the mains uh, 240 volts of, uh, of AC power, and it's routing round here underneath the uh, the servo driver uh, and the servo motor in the gearbox here and it's coming to this servo driver here which I've labelled number number one and then if I flip the cover open uh, what you can see is the power coming in here the brown lead the live lead the neutral connection coming in here and then the earth lead connecting to the uh, the heat sink um, on the servo driver and then the output of power from the servo driver is these three cables here plus the earth lead. So these three are going into this, this silver uh, cable and then feeding directly into the motor. And the reason why this cable is different from the others is the silver uh, uh, braiding is providing shielding for electromagnetic interference. Um, and what what's actually happening here is this this tube of, of braiding is actually the uh, the earth lead uh, that you can that you can see here in addition to earthing that's being provided uh, to the power connection and the reason why we have this is particularly when you've got you know six motors uh, potentially a lot of current and voltage being supplied to these servo motors when your uh, when the motion rig is doing its thing um is the you're, you're creating uh, basically an electromagnetic field that you need to shield against otherwise it runs the risk of disrupting other electronics so not not risk to your you know to your health or anything like that but if for example you've got usb cables and other low voltage devices and you've got a a, a field a magnetic field that's being generated by these um, by these power cables um, you want to protect against that, otherwise, you know, your the USB connections will drop out, and and you'll get all sorts of errors and readings and things like that. So that's that's the purpose of these uh, these silver cables that you see here. And then lastly, what we have is the the encoder, the data cable coming out of the motor, and it feeds into this. Uh, I think it's a fifteen pin uh, 
uh, socket on the servo driver. So I believe the the way in which these things work, uh, you can download manuals uh, online about, about it if you're interested, but you've got power coming into the servo driver, power coming out of the servo driver into the servo motor to give it the mechanical force, and somehow you have to give the servo motor instructions on to, you know, how do you want to turn at what speed, what rate, what position is the motor in at any given time, all those all those sorts of things. I believe it's done in impulses for, for servo motors rather than, you know, like a, a motor that you'd have on like a vacuum clean or, or, or something like that, where the current's on all of the time. Uh, it, it does it in in steps and uh, uh, and things like that. A bit like, um, you know, direct drive wheelbases. Uh, it's, uh, it sends uh, short pulses and signals to uh, give very accurate motion. Uh, and then of course, that's that will be to the servo motor and then it goes into the 50 to 1 uh, reducer gearbox uh, which uh, steps up the uh, the torque and power uh, significantly right that's that's how it works um let's have a quick demonstration of that hopefully it's uh, uh, it's still working it was last night <laughs> let's just get that stable and sorted quality video production there Okay, good. Right, so first of all, um, let's check the, uh, the earth. So we've got the three pin plug there and I'll, I'll just do a continuity test. I'll put one of my leads onto the earth pin, which is the, the large one on the three pin plug. And Not making the best of connection there, but there we go. I'll try and hold that in position, and then there we go. So, so the steel chassis is earthed, even with it not uh, uh, switched on. Motors, the earthing rail, the heat sink on the servo motors. So yeah, that's that's all good. The the instructions talk about adding the the earth lead to the mains power switch, uh, and of course that would mean that only when the device is switched on that the that the earth um, is actually active and uh, the circuit uh, effectively is is active in that way. Whereas this way, by attaching it to the rig directly and having you know, the earth coming into the, the power distribution unit and then spreading out to all the other components uh, and then ultimately being, you know, connected to the three pin plug. It means that as soon as this is plugged into a wall socket, the whole unit is earthed, whether it's switched on or not. You know, that's, that seems like a, a better option to me. Right. So I've plugged that in to the wall socket and switched that on. The next thing I need to do is switch on the the EPS. So we just give that a second to start up. I think we're good to go. And then switch on the power. And we have power. Very good, very nice. So let me show you the startup sequence again from above so you can appreciate what I was saying about the uh, about the timing relay what i want you to pay attention to is this green light here and if i'm able to capture it on camera how the the led displays on these three servo drivers uh, initially come on followed with a one second delay of the of the other three units over there so let me switch the device off let's reposition the camera for you I'll hold it as steady as I can. Okay, three, two, one. There we go. And it was actually the red light, wasn't it, that uh, that came on after the one second delay. Uh, yeah, really happy about that. Now, you might be wondering, uh, what's next? And how do we 
uh, how do we get the the servo drivers uh, receiving information about telemetry data you know, how, how much do i want these these servo motors and gearboxes to move and then cause the uh, the motion which by the way the uh, i finished building the, the top assembly of the platform there so that's the bit that's going to move and these uh, coupling joints we use m16 bolts connected to arms that then connect to crankshafts that uh, connect to the to the gearbox. I'll show you that obviously as I'm uh, able to, to build and make those connections. Um, but next up uh, we need to focus on um, the control of the servo drivers. So what you've got is this is the the motion for sim uh, uh, microcontroller board and this is the device that connects to your computer that will send it the telemetry, the movement information. And then what this device will do is uh, via these 25 pin uh, uh, parallel serial ports, um, they connect to the, uh, to the 25 pin ports on the servo drivers uh, and tell the motors what it is that we that we want them to do. So this will sit in the in the middle of the motion rig if I can find space for it. Uh, it should should fit, and uh, we'll make uh, the those those last connections to the servo drivers. And once we've done that, uh, I'll add the the top cover to the uh, to the base assembly, and then we can start connecting the the crank arms, the rods, and we should be good to test. I'm hoping this weekend, uh, no promises, uh, but it's looking good. Anyway, uh, I hope you found that uh, useful and that I've done justice to the system <laughs> and explained how the power distribution works. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to, uh, to answer them. Otherwise, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next video.